so Nathan has, has shared his testimony many times. This isn't anything new, but um, through high school, through seventh, eighth grade through high school, um, Nathan became addicted to pornography and, um, and some bad relationships and, and got into just really a sinful lifestyle. And it's, it's just... You know, we could go on about the grace of God that has delivered him from that and the, the encounters, even the dream encounters that he had with God that, that put him on the different path, that literally lifted him out of that, that pit and, and set him free. But the, we can focus on that and we will miss the value of sharing my parenting failures. And, and you see, that, that's a glaring example of where I wasn't there coaching Nathan along. I wasn't there in the way that he needed me to be. He, in this case, he was in the wrestling match, and I was off doing my own thing, and he was getting his, his butt kicked in the, in the ring, you know, if you will. And so, and I didn't realize how bad I was or how, how bad those mistakes were, how devastating they were until, you know, until the Lord had already delivered him out of it. And if, if we thought this was just our story, we wouldn't be sharing this. I hope you understand. But, and so now Nathan has been able to come along and start and help me to be a better parent to our, to our younger kids. Right? But, uh, but that doesn't happen if he's hiding, if he's hiding his sin and the, the challenge. And if I'm pretending that I did everything right, look, I got the, a Bible school student for a 22-year-old. I did it. I, I'm, I'm a great dad. I'm a great parent. Look what I did. Well, that's not the whole story. One of the things we realized as we reflected on the, our, our story and our relationship as I was growing up, we had a really great relationship. However, when it came to the issue of sexual morality, pornography, that subject was never talked about. And, and there was never this, I didn't feel comfortable enough to talk to my dad about this kind of thing. And so whenever, one of the things that I have, have begun to learn is the, the value of being open and vulnerable with your, your sons and your daughters from a young age and getting them to be uh, comfortable with talking to you about different things. And so just for instance, uh, we've been doing this with, with Justice. And so we have an, I have an 11-year-old son um, now that we're trying to, to fix some of the, the things that I did wrong with Nathan, you know, surely between the two of us, we don't have to sit there and watch our, my other son go through the same struggles, right? You'd like to think that we've learned something and we can learn by learning from each other. We can avoid, help justice avoid the, the years of, of uh, the enemy having his way with him, right? Yeah, so even just last Sunday, this was just uh, three days ago. Uh, I was here, and I decided somehow Justice hopped in the car with me after church, and we went home, and it was just him and I, and I, I said to him, Justice, what, have you been, what did you learn about today? What did you guys talk about in church? He said, oh, we've been talking about temptations, and I said, oh, really? I was, and so we started talking about that, and I was like, you know, Justice, what are some of the, the temptations that you feel like you, uh, the enemy brings against you? And he was like, uh, cussing. I was like, yeah. And he was like, and wearing the same clothes over and over. <laughs> I was like, well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I guess that's real, I guess. Uh, but I, I could have I just talked about him. I could have just focused on him, different things that, that he's tempted with. But I decided to take this opportunity and, and open up and be vulnerable about me. Uh-huh. And I said, Justice, what do you think are some things that, that the enemy tries to tempt me with? He goes, money. I go, yeah, with money. And I was like, what else? He goes, uh, with um, making babies. Okay, so here he was. 
he, this was on his mind, okay? He's 11 years old. It's on his mind. He doesn't know how to talk about it, right? He's uncomfortable right talking about it. he's feeling out with his brother, how am I able to talk to you about this? That's right. Because he knows. He, he is fully aware of the, the different temptations that come against him. Money, sure, and sex. And so I said that to him. I said, sex? He goes, yeah. I go, yeah, you're right, Justice. And, of course, at this time, this hasn't been Justice's first conversation. I've had, this, I've had conversations with him. And, and so that was the mistake I made with, with Nathan, is never talking about it, right? And so when Nathan gets faced with, with temptation, he gets faced with what his peers are saying, right? And the stuff they're talking about, he doesn't feel comfortable talking, coming to me and talking to me about it because we've never talked about it before, at least not, you know, in a meaningful way, right? And so we've determined by his help, by his help challenging me and my, my brother, his uncle, and a couple other uh, friends that we have with young boys, Nathan has been challenging us for two, three years now, to have these conversations with your sons, with your young sons, so that they feel comfortable. They realize, oh, when they hear about it, now when Justice hears of his friends talk about it, he's in fifth grade, with the, the average age of boys being introduced to pornography is what? Eight years old. Eight years old. That's not fifth grade. That's third grade. That's the average age. Okay, so he's going to hear about it. He's going to have friends try to expose him to it. He's going to have friends talking about it. So now when he hears it, he's like, oh, I already know about that stuff. My dad has talked to me about that stuff. I know that from my dad. And in fact, if I feel uncomfortable with something you're saying or doing, I can talk to my dad about it. That's, that's a game changer. In fact, it was so cool to see my brother Justice and I had this conversation in my car. And then we, we, we talked about it and we prayed for each other. And we went into the house and, uh, and I said, Justice, why don't you tell dad about what we talked about? And Justice goes, oh, we talked about our temptations. And I was like, yeah, well, tell him about it. And dad's asking him about it. And... And I was like, Justice, why don't you tell Dad what some of my temptations are? And he goes, money and sex. So now he was comfortable. Just because that little conversation, now he, had, he could say the word. He was comfortable saying the word. He, and he was just a little more comfortable talking about it. He knew that he was safe. It was safe for him to talk about that with his dad and his older brother. And, it, and that's because of the older generation being vulnerable and honest and humble before them, like, and I think, uh, I think the, I think the older generation can help set the tone for that. You know, even that same conversation, I was able when Justice shared with me his temptation to cuss. You know, I could have gone two ways. I could have said, "Ooh, yeah, cussing, that's bad. We don't allow that. You'll get mouth washed out with soap if you do that kind of stuff." I could have done that. You know what I did instead? I said, "Would you believe Justice?" that I was in fifth grade the first time I ever cussed. And I began to tell the story how I was the same age that he is. And I told the whole story of how I got caught and, and how I had started cussing because it was so cool. I thought I was cool anyway. And how my sister caught me and I got my mouth washed out with soap and I decided that wasn't such a big deal anymore. And so I never did it again. And so again, so all of a sudden, it's such a, this is such a small little deal. But Justice says, huh. Dad's just like me, and dad's gone through this. I'm not in this by myself. I'm not all alone. My dad has gone through the same thing, and he's, he's, he, he's already past it, on, beyond it. He doesn't have the same allure to it anymore once he knows that. And so that's just on a, just such a small scale with fathers and sons and brothers, but that's the kind of thing that we need to see in the body of Christ. We need to, I went to a church for many years. It was so stinking unhealthy. And the main reason why it was unhealthy is because the pastor stood up every Sunday morning and pretended that he had everything in a row and that he was perfect. The people worshipped him 
The people held him on such a high pedestal. They were convinced that he was perfect. And he thought that that was the way, that was the way to lead, is never let him see you sweat, never be vulnerable, never let him see you struggle. That was his leadership style. And it killed the church. It's not God's way. Because it's not real, it's not genuine, and it, and it creates a bad culture, an unhealthy culture. And it robs God from the glory that's due his name. 